Welcome to the Two Acre Homestead Podcast. We're your hosts, Kevin and Lisa. And today we're talking about how to increase the value of your homestead. Let's get started. Welcome to the Two Acre Homestead. Come along with us on our journey from a small suburban homestead lifestyle to our new lifestyle homesteading in the rural countryside of Southern Arizona. We'll share with you our tips, tricks, successes, and failures from both our past suburban lifestyle to our new rural lifestyle, all all on on the the Two Acre Acre Homestead. Homestead. Welcome back. We're super excited to have you guys with us today. So today we are taking a little bit of a break from our normal theme. Um, The theme of this season is all about homesteading with kids. However, we are seeing things that are in the news these days. People are talking about things. I just got approached randomly today at the gas station. Somebody wanted to take a deep dive into the subject of what's going on with the housing market and the economy. And we wanted to come on and at least give you some of our advice on what you can do on your homestead. When we are looking at an economy such as ours, at least here in the United States, where things are not looking as great as people would lead you to believe. The sky is falling. (laughs) It is. But, um, you know, we do want to preface this by, first of all, saying here in this episode, this is not, we do not intend for this to constitute as financial advice, whether personal or business. Um, we're not giving any, any advice to you. We are not telling you what to do. We are simply giving suggestions, ideas, things that we're doing here on our homestead to create value. So we're really telling you what we're doing and not really um, necessarily what you should be doing. But if you get some knowledge from this or value from it, great. That's what we're here for. Yeah, When it comes to things like the financial advice, we listen to different sources, we read different things and so on, but we make our own decisions you know, we would expect you to do that. Of course, we have to say that legally wise, because we're not financial professionals. That's not our, um, you know, mm-hmm. goal when it comes to things like that and so on. So anyway. Yeah. Um, because somewhere in the past, people have failed to be adults and they decided to get so happy. Void so. in Vermont and all those. Yeah. You know, know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do not eat the shampoo. So yeah. Well, it said it was... <laughs> It sounded like it could go on a dessert as a dessert. It topping. was a coconut anyway, flavor. Anyways, yeah. but before we get into that, we always like to do this little banter back and forth. So what is new in your neck of the woods? Homeschooling mm-hmm. and homeschooling and more homeschooling. That is what's new in my world. Kudos to you. You're doing a good job. It's not easy, but you are doing a good job with it. Well, we have this kid our oldest son is like <sighs> his new nickname is Einstein. Yeah, and and you know, when you're trying to teach a child who is on the spectrum um and incredibly brilliantly smart, it is very hard to keep that to to keep him focused and not look for shortcuts and not do things quickly. Um, you know, like maybe calculate things in his head or, you know, just things like that, you know, trying to get him to follow the process is very, I don't know, I think pretty soon I'm going to have to figure out a different way of homeschooling this because he is incredibly smart, but, um, it is just, it's, it's, it's um it's overwhelming to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you've got a support system. I, I mean do. me, but you've got friends. Well, I have other friends, yeah. We too, have that 
do this right they've right homesc- they've been doing it for yeah some time and- we've got like a little co-op going on so yeah yeah so i'm in um one of the moms one of the other moms that's in the co-op we've started to become really good friends because she's raised kids herself who are on the spectrum um and still is raising one that's on the spectrum so she's got a lot of tips and tricks and things that she's helping out with as well so it's really good I think when you are homeschooling to have a community of people, um, because it can be kind of a lonely life, but, um, by having, and being a part of a co-op, you know, the kids get association, you do, you've got, you know, that support with your, um, your own personal support group from other parents and so forth. So, but that has been really, my world has been between tomatoes (laughs) tomatoes <laughs> because that's that time of year for us. So tomatoes and homeschooling. That's where it's at right now. That sounds like that could be a title of a episode. Tomatoes and homeschooling. It probably could. <laughs> What's new in your world? Goat pen part two. <laughs> um, so building a, well, started it working on the second goat pen for our bucks we mm-hmm. currently have one, but two are They're on coming, the but we have to make sure we've got the structure and fencing in place. Um, long story short, part of it is um, to make it a little bit more convenient to be able to, if we want to bring a doe over for date night, so to speak, to make it a little bit easier. So thought it through to be able to make a system where there's gates where we can open it and then they don't go into the other part of our field that Mm -hmm. we'll be developing more in the future. Um, But so I just got some more supplies for that and uh, working on that. So it takes a little bit of time, but uh, we are keep plugging along on that. So I'm happy about that. Oh, and that reminds me when you say the field, we have to order our seeds for the field because that's a new project that we're working on as well is seeding out our pastures and getting bringing that all up to speed correctly. So yep. super exciting on that. Yep. Yeah. It's been this has been quite the year mm-hmm. <laughs> for us on our homestead. And this is that time of year I think most of us who garden and who homestead, we feel this fall is such a um it's such a transitional season. And for some reason this year, I just feel, I don't know about you, but I just feel like it's like, Oh my goodness, I got it. We've got this to do. We've got that to do. We've got all of these deadlines going and because winter is coming and you know, we've got to get everything done. And it's just kind of like that all hands on deck right Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm sure there's other homesteaders that feel the exact same way. Yeah. But this is why we've done, you know, other seasons where we've, you know, had where, you know, avoiding burnout, try to do things in a more organized fashion. And I have to say, by following our own advice, oh, yeah. it's, we, it's remember helping. Remember that episode we did? We, are we, no. Huh? <laughs> it's one of those, oh, yeah, that episode we did, are we doing that? Or should we tweak it, <laughs> tweak what we're doing a little bit? Yeah, exactly. Good friend of ours had said, you know, if you always do what you always did, you'll you always, always get, get what, what you, you always, always got. got. Yep. Exactly. So sometimes we make changes. But um, back to our topic. Yes. Because, you know, like you mentioned, this is something that's been in the news for some time, more so uh, recently than before. But um, I guess I'll start off by saying we're kind of obviously coming from the perspective of we're here in the United States. So the way things go here as far as buying a home and you finance it and how many years and so on is not the same in other countries. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, some countries, you know, you don't really finance. You build a little bit at a time. And Mm -hmm. right, we went to what was it, Belize, Mm -hmm. and we saw how they were doing that. And it's only been recently that they're starting to get into type of financing for things like that. 
Um, I think it was in the UK, what, 20 years is probably the standard for what they might finance. I think if they so. do, but here mm-hmm. typically they push 30 years. Oh, there's new 40 right? year products 40 now. Years, that's, yeah. that, well, that sounds good. Yeah. Let me get into that. Let me get into debt. 1% for 40 years. down in 40 years. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. <clears throat> so you've seen things like obviously the interest rates are going up, right? As of the recording of this, if you are here in the United States, and I again, I'm stressing as as of the recording of this, mortgage rates right now are at 7.8. If I, because I, I was in the mortgage industry for a long time, that was my career um, prior to being a mom. Um, I would say that we're recording this in the month of September. I'm willing to bet by the time we get to the beginning of November, we're going to be seeing eight or maybe even eight and a half percent. Um, because the Fed, you know, is talking about raising rates. Technically, that does not impact the mortgage industry on its own in normal years. But the mortgage industry goes based off of the 10 year bond. Um, and the 10 year bond, the higher it goes, the higher your mortgage interest rates go. And if investors keep investing and they they keep going to the 10-year bond for shelter and for protection because that's a safe haven and that those things keep the, those interest rates keep getting driven up because the Fed is trying to lower um, inflation then you're going to have higher interest rates I would not be surprised if by the end of a uh, first quarter beginning of second quarter next year, we're looking at double digits for mortgage interest rates. Yeah. Wouldn't so be surprised. It's interesting because at least again, perspective of the US, um, you know, I know I don't keep a pulse on every other country and all that, how those things are working right now. But interesting because here I had read recently where forty percent or so of people, you know, have maybe a three or four percent mortgage mm-hmm. right now. And it's the golden handcuffs, meaning mm-hmm. why am I going to move? I got this good deal, so to speak, because now I'm going to have a rate of 7% or whatever. And of course there are people who have sold and moved somewhere because they're sold on that. Well, you can refinance when they're going to come down, like mm-hmm. it's going to come down soon. And anyway, so it keeps going up, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't want to move. Inventory is low. So you know, people that are trying to sell their home, it isn't selling. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about especially real estate, it's not like when you go to the supermarket, you know, I don't know, a bottle of Coke is $1.99 or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And a home, just pull a number out of of a hat here. You try to sell your home for $300,000. If it doesn't sell, why? Because nobody's willing to Mm-hmm. spend 300,000 on that. They don't feel that it's worth it or they don't have the incentive because their situation's better. It you know, there's a lot of factors, right? So maybe it's mm-hmm. not worth 300,000. You think you have $100,000 in equity, but if you can't sell it, you don't. Your home, simply put, your home is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. Exactly. Now the reverse could be true. Somebody could pay a lot more because they want to get in. There were stories of that. Somebody, you know, bought the next, the, that person's next house mm-hmm. and their house because they really wanted it. But you know, those are few and far between. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so it, it's creating this sense of, you know, you thought your home or you were told you were sold on that idea that your house is that value You went to Zillow and you saw that number or whatever, and it's not, excuse me, worth that. Right. But it kind of spawned this discussion that we were talking about this. How do you create value then? Right. Right? Because, and we're not going to get into the, well, spend money on your kitchen because if you put in (laughs) $30,000, you know, that's the, that's going to give you the best rate of return. We're not talking about that kind of a thing. But coming from the homesteading aspect, how do yes. you create real value 
on your homestead. Mm-hmm. And and the reason why we came up, we thought of this, but this was an actual conversation between the two of us. Um, but we came up with this because many people are stuck. And I use that term with intention. Many people are stuck right now where they are. So you're, if you're looking at getting into homesteading or maybe you're, you're, you're in your second or third year of homesteading and you're thinking, my goodness, you know, I would like to get into a different house. I'd like to buy bigger property or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But you can't because maybe you're a responsible borrower. You have really good credit. You can handle your money responsibly, but you can't pay a 7.85% mortgage rate interest rate to finance your home. So it really leaves that person with one, you know, one or two options. Option A, stay where you are. Option B, you can leave where you are, but wherever you go, it needs to be a whole lot cheaper. Or option C, go buy raw land, build it from scratch, you know, Um, in which case, we do have a sponsor for that. And I'm sure that ad will play, um, will play here. But, um, you know, for those of you who are choosing to stay where you are, um, for whatever your reasons are, you need to create the value that now your home more than ever before, you need to create the value in your home because Let's just be real. Have you gone to the grocery store? Have you, how, how are we affording all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, every time I go to a grocery store, I'm like, how are people, you can't afford not to grow your own food. It is getting mission critical Mm -hmm. at this point. I don't see how people, especially when you have family um, and when you have kids running around, I don't see how you can't. So by doing certain things, whether you are, you know, in your current homestead and maybe you're feeling a little bit crowded, you know, you, you, you need something bigger, but you can't, or you're thinking, Hey, I've got to start homesteading pretty quick. There, there are three things that we're thinking off the top of our heads that will help you. And the first one is learn permaculture. If you're growing a garden, um, especially if you're in the city and you've got a regular city size lot, I highly encourage you start learning permaculture. You may not have the property, the um, ability to create a bunch of raised beds. You may or may not. I don't know what your circumstances are, but if you don't, um, you know, use permaculture, grow food in different areas around your property. If you're in a place that has an HOA, a homeowners association, um, where, you know, we are very anti HOA here, but uh, (laughs) because they tell you what you can grow, what you can't grow, the color of your house and, and all of this stuff. They tell you all of these, these laws or bylaws for your property. You have a weed that's $850. Yes. (laughs) Oh, but, and the paper we printed on cost you twenty five <laughs> to tell you about it. Yeah, right. Uh, plus the stamp. Um, anyway, so the point is, is that the HOA, you know, you might be able to skirt around a couple of things with them, um, especially if they're monitoring your front yard. You can maybe grow a couple of plants that are actual edible plants, but they look they look beautiful. You know, I mean, I think all plants look beautiful. Even weeds look beautiful if they're in the right place, but I digress. But, you know, see, see if those are things that you can do to start producing your own food. And if you're running out of space, look to different things like permaculture, um, to create, uh, to create abundance, even in a small space. Um, really start trying to look at different avenues of using the property that you current, the property that you currently have to create abundance. 
stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you looking to build a homestead from the ground up? Or maybe you're looking to build an off-grid dream home, a vacation home, or maybe just a piece of land to call your own. Visit yourcheapland.com to buy rural land in the wide open spaces of southwestern United States. When you visit yourcheapland.com, they're here to help you. And with their help, you can do this. You can take your dream of owning land and make it a reality. Most down payments are only $294, including the document fee. Remember, everyone qualifies for financing at yourcheapland.com. Head on over to yourcheapland.com and start making those dreams come true. And now, back to our podcast. And another thing is um, developing pastures. So that's one thing that we're going to be doing a little bit more of in the future. Mm -hmm. We've done, let's say, some tests, so to speak, because we have an area that we threw down some seed. I believe it was barley. Um, Mm -hmm. We were even doing sprouting. I was experimenting with some different ways of trying to get a good system there um, to develop good grain, good sprouted grains for the chickens and so on. Um, that provides value. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to the chickens, just real quick, I mean, if you buy feed in bulk, you're saving a lot. I think the last time I went for a run, it was mm-hmm. a little over a thousand pounds worth of feed and um, a mixture of Milo cracked corn, um, oats, mm-hmm. and I believe it was 40 to 50% savings just on the seed alone. But then if you sprout it, you're getting a lot more value as well, Mm -hmm. and it's even healthier food. Right. So that's another way to uh, create some value. And you don't have to have a ton of land. You don't have to have a ton to do Mm -mm. that, right? You can just do a little area for if you've got chickens and so on, even if you had just a few, right? Right. But you can still create value uh, that way. And then another thing you can do, too, is grow what you eat. Right. I think you talked one time about you grew so much cauliflower you didn't know what to do with. Because we don't eat cauliflower. We don't eat cauliflower, right? Mm-hmm. But the 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 lesson from that was think of the top few things that we eat a lot of. And then mm-hmm. concentrate on especially from seed, mm-hmm. growing that, right? Because you get maximum value if you can from growing from seed, starting from seed starts. Um, that's a good way to maximize value. And I would say learn to change your diet too. Mm -hmm. Um, For example, if you're in, you know, a small area, now you were talking about pastures, you know, and that's, that's if we have a bigger, you know, somebody that has a bigger size uh, piece of land. But if you're in suburbia, you may not be able to have that option to have pastures, but what you do have is you can grow things, other things that you eat that are not necessarily vegetables. You can grow animals. You mentioned, um, Kevin, you just mentioned chickens. I would throw in there, learn how to eat things like rabbit meat. You know, that's not something that you can go and buy at the store. You're not going to find rabbit meat. I I don't know. Maybe you would. I don't know. Um, I'll just say my experience being here in Arizona, shopping in Arizona, I have yet to see rabbit meat in a grocery store. And just to throw this out there, if you're on a small holding Mm -hmm. and you are in that situation, you're in a cookie cutter neighborhood, you're maybe Mm -hmm. with an HOA. What have we learned about even keeping things like chickens? They don't want roosters typically because they're noisy. The neighbors don't like that. Right. Even hens make noise. Yes, they do. But rabbits don't make a whole lot of noise. No, they do not. Your neighbors are most likely not going to hear them. They are not going to know you have rabbits. (laughs) So that's a good choice, especially if... I'm not saying, you know, if you're on a bigger property, don't, because we do. Yeah. But there's there's a good... 
idea. Exactly. You know, grow some rabbits. Um, you know, learn to eat that type of meat. You know, it has a different flavor. Yes, it can taste like chicken. The younger, the better. Um, it's not as when rabbits are older, they tend to taste more gamey, but when they're younger, they don't, um, but learn how to eat rabbit meat, learn how to, you know, create value by having things like that on your homestead, um, whether your homestead is in suburbia or in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are some things that we, um, think are really good tips as far as keeping, um, adding value to your homestead. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we wanted to talk about is diversification or the, how you diversify. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not financial planners. Um, you know, take this advice for what it's worth, but there's some things that we've read, we've researched, we've implemented, and we see the results. Mm -hmm. So these are just some ideas that you might think about. One is in the news you've seen stories over the last, what, six months to a year, bank failures, a lot of people taking a lot of their deposits out. Mm -hmm. um, people aren't saving as much. They're racking up that credit card debt. Um, of course, you know, they sell you on that FDIC insured, but why not open another checking account at a different bank, one that's not related to the one that you're um, probably used to or you've been a member for years? Um, another thing too, is don't put all your money in checking, you know, build up some savings. That's one thing that a lot of people are neglecting to do, not put money in savings. Um, there've been a lot of stories about, uh, some banks out there that maybe aren't the traditional banks. These traditional banks don't give you much interest at all. Uh, they used to, but, uh, in these days, you know, there are some online banks out there that don't really have physical branches um, they're giving four up five percent upwards of six percent. Mm -hmm. Put some money in there, and then make a plan to put something in monthly into those accounts too. Right. And if you think, well, you know, if that's a new idea to you, uh, an online bank, really, I'm not sure if I feel good about that. Again, make sure it's FDIC insured. I think what is it? It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars is what they insure up to. So that's one positive. Um, but also these major banks, they're closing a lot of these branches. They're closing a lot of branches. Mm -hmm. They're reducing their hours. Mm -hmm. You know, you, um, I remember going to, to one of our banks and, you know, this lady, the older lady was, uh, you could tell a traditional, she's been going there for years. She was surprised that they were closed so early on one day during the week. And then you can't talk to somebody on the weekends. So this is what's happening. The trend is going to be less and less in-person services, mm -hmm. AI and everything else, right? Yeah, correct. But again, you know, going back to what you said, you know, just keeping your money in different places. Don't, you know, the old adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And that's really what we're trying to say is have multiple different banks. Um, so that way, you know, if that's what you want to do, you want to keep money in, in a bank, then that's probably the wisest thing to do is to have it in different banks because if the banking system, I should say when the banking system starts to fail, um, you can access money in different places. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but then, you know, there's something to be said. I think all homesteaders should have access to actual cash. Um, you know, I don't care if you bury it in a field, but, you know, at least have some tangible assets. And that probably leads to the second thing, which is, you know, buying gold, silver, um, and bonds. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Yeah. And then another thing, too, as far as diversification is you think about your main property, your house, if you're on a big or small holding, um, look into buying land. We mentioned that a little bit. We have yes. a sponsor. Yes, we do. Let me just interrupt you mm -hmm. really quick. We do have a sponsor. Um, they are gracious enough to sponsor our podcast, which um, our sponsor is yourcheapland.com. Please visit them if you're interested in looking to buy land. Um, 
a specific, uh, specifically raw land. Um, they, the nice thing about um, this company is they actually own the land. So you're not buying it from, you know, there's other websites where you can buy land and you might be buying it from one person or another person. You don't know who you're buying the land from. You don't know who owns it, but this company, they own the land that they are selling. So they have the information for you on whatever parcel of land that you're looking at buying through them, they can give you the accurate information. Of course, you need to do your due diligence. Um, Be a smart buyer, do your own diligence, do your own homework. But there's a level of comfort knowing that if you do want to buy land, you can go through our sponsor, um, Your Cheap Land, and you can buy from them. And be sure to use our code 2ACRE when you check out. Sorry, that's a shameless, shameless plug, but it's, it's necessary because we are talking about buying land. And that's so. two acres spelled out, correct? Yes. T-W-O-A-C-R-E. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And thanks. And the nice thing about that is um, if, you know, you go ahead and buy land or you're looking to buy land, I should say, um, probably two things come to mind. I mean, there's a lot of things you want to do your dil- due diligence to make sure everything's in the up and up. If you are buying it it's, and it's raw and you want to, for instance, put a structure, mm-hmm. you know, th- look at things like, is there an HOA in that area? Because sometimes there's like a neighborhood that was uh, created, it was designed, but you know, that's designed for you putting your custom house, for example, mm-hmm. are you going to be holding to, you have to put some specific type of structure, a certain mm-hmm. square footage, so on. Um, but two things come to mind. One is, does it have power mm-hmm. and does it have water to the property line? Correct. Those are two things that could really save you a lot of headache and a lot of money mm-hmm. because that raw land, if something were to happen, you know, you lose your job or something, that land could be a secondary place that you could live. Exactly. So if you had power to the property line and water would be really important too. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say water over power. Water over power. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was just thinking that water over power. Because it's going to take a little effort to pull from the property line into where you want to build or whatnot. Or you and might just want to go off grid. You might want to go off grid. But mm-hmm. then, you know, you might have the option, the ability to, let's say you already had a travel trailer. Mm-hmm. There you go. Now you've got a, you know, portable home. Right. And you can plant it there. But then you have to look into that too. Can you park that type of vehicle there. Which leads to really the third thing that I think is equally important. When you are looking at a piece of land, by all means, try to open title, try to get a title report from a title agency, because there are specific zoning laws, like you're just explaining, you know, you don't know what it's zoned for. And I know like here we live in Cochise County, Arizona, you know, Cochise County has like all kinds of R dash designations for zoning. R means residential dash. And then there's, I think, I think it's up to 48 numbers. If memory serves me right, it can, it can be up to 48 different designations. So, you know, really make sure you get a title report um, because you don't know if there are things like back taxes that are owed on that property. Um, you don't know if there's been, you and I were looking at a piece of property not too long ago. This is of course, um, before we met our sponsor, your cheap land, but, um, we were looking at some property and we found out there's a whole lawsuit on this property. You know, um, it was, it, this property had multiple parcels and a couple of the parcels that we were interested in, you know, one of them, I think out of the four parcels we were looking at, one of them was included in a lawsuit. So, you know, but we wouldn't have known that if we had no, you know, we would, you wouldn't know that if you didn't have title. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, you know, it's important to have title. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. And then another uh, important thing that we wanted to talk to is about budget. Oh, I know, especially for married couples. That is the topic that's fun to talk about, right? 
But seriously, budget, budget everything. If you haven't done this, or if you have done this, and maybe it's been some time since you created it, I really encourage you, a lot of advice that I've read and heard about is, you know, make a spreadsheet or make a list of all of the things. Start with things like, well, let me think about this for a second. A lot of people are going to say, start with your mortgage and then all your utilities and so on. I would encourage you to first start with things like, you know, um, your donations. Some of you like us are religious, right? So maybe your donations, you know, Mm -hmm. what is your obligation first to that, that you want to donate and then look at those other things like your mortgage Mm -hmm. or your rent, um, your utilities. And then of course, any other things that come out, car insurance, um, home insurance that might something that might fall outside of the normal utilities monthly subscriptions subscriptions is important and i know that's been a learning experience for us because sometimes you look at your statements and you'll notice wait a second why is this coming out and wait there's a keyword that you said here what's that look at your statements mm-hmm. yep look at them the old school 30 years ago, whatnot, people used to write, they would write everything in their checkbook. There's a little column mm-hmm. used to put a check mark or the letter C that it cleared. People don't tend to do that anymore. And it's really sad because you could be spending money and not even know it. Yeah. So the subscriptions, the reason why that's important is because there is such an encouragement out there to spend something monthly. Even computer software, basic stuff to write documents and so on. That stuff, you used to go to the store, buy a, what, CD-ROM or whatnot, (laughs) and you used to install it in your computer. Well, now they want to encourage you to either pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee. Mm -hmm. But all these companies want a steady income stream. But what happens is if you forget about those things, your Amazon subscription, your... Mm-hmm. You know, your music services, your, all your streaming services that have replaced cable, whatever. It, the list goes <laughs> on and on. Mm-hmm. And if you're not aware of it, if you're not looking at those statements and you're not aware, make sure you jot those things down. That's right. So those things are monthly expenses. Mm-hmm. If it's a yearly subscription, I would encourage you to go as far as figure out what that monthly fee would be if you were paying that monthly and put it on that as well. And then utilities that change every month, like electricity, water usage, gas, keep an eye on those because sometimes those things can get out of hand too. Mm -hmm. Um, I would encourage you to do an average, do a six month average. I'm sure you could call those utilities and say, can you give me what that average is? But do that because that way you can get an idea of, hey, I'm paying X a month for my gas, whatever it is, you know, it's going to spike in the winter. It's going to go down in the summer, Mm -hmm. right? So those are important things. So get a good grip on everything that's going, coming in, Mm -hmm. going out and review it from time to time, maybe quarterly and see if you need to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And then it's important too, because you need to factor in things like gardening, you know, Buying Mm -hmm. seeds, buying hoes and all these different things, wheelbarrows, because it busted because, (laughs) you know, the tires are, you know, two years old or three years old or whatever. It's an annual thing. It's an annual thing, right? (laughs) Yeah. When it comes to animals, you know, there's there's equipment and so on. There's there's things that, so you budget for those things. And vet bills. Vet bills. Vets are expensive. You need to know... When if you if you use a vet to give shots, for example, different mm-hmm. things, you know, you can probably kind of figure out when those are gonna come up and about how much it's gonna be. But then there's the things that come up, the emergency situations too. Right. You can't necessarily well, you can plan for them. You may not know they're coming, but that's why it's important to know how much breathing room do you have. Mm-hmm. And then if you don't have breathing room, make breathing room. Either make right. it or don't do it. 
Um, Mm -hmm. you know, and and unfortunately that's a hard reality, but you know, if you can't make the room for it, then it's better to opt not to do it. So like, for example, let's just say a dairy cow, you know, if you can financially afford it and you've got the room for it, then by all means, go ahead and try to get that animal. Um, but there's more to having a dairy cow than just purchasing it. You know, there's maintenance that needs to be taken, you know, the vets, the feed, you need to factor all of those things in to see, do you have the ability to not just have this animal, but to maintain this animal? Right. Whether you're growing hay on pasture or Mm -hmm. do you have to go out and buy a number of bills of hay, you know, make sure you have enough to get you through winter. Right. All those things. Because if you can't, if you can just, yeah, I can afford to buy, I can buy a cow. I'm just using that as an example. Great. But can you afford to maintain said cow? Mm -hmm. And if you can't afford to maintain that animal, then either you need to rethink your budget or you need to not have it because what's going to happen is going back to our main theme. That's not adding value to your homestead at all. It's actually devaluing your homestead because now you're going to have some animal that's on your property that you can't afford. And it's the same thing with all of these other things that we've talked about, you know, um, you know, the banks, you know, uh, diversifying your banks, your bank accounts. If you don't have any cash income, you know, that you can diversify, well, then that may not be a good idea for you right now. You know, work on creating a savings account so that you have something to diversify. Um, and, you know, so that way it's adding value, not just to the homestead as far as animals, food, and and growing things. But there's also the back end of homesteading, which is your financials. Because if your financials aren't right, then your homestead, it's it's not going to be easy to run a homestead. And it's not going to be easy to create value in your home when your financials are all upside down. So this is really a good time to get yourself, get your house in order. Um, You know, again, these are just some of our, these are some things that we have either things we have done or things we are doing um, to create value on our homes. And refining. Yes. Because like I said, you know, I mentioned a budget you know, set a budget. I think I looked at it as September, kind of like the new year, Mm -hmm. you know, started again. And, you know, every once in a while, assess, make adjustments. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that with everything, then the better you are, you learn from mistakes, what doesn't work, Mm -hmm. and then you can move forward. Right. Right. So, you know, if you have that concern, if you've thought of, selling you you know you your house hasn't sold or whatnot or you had this false sense of what it's worth that may be what it could have been on paper but we're talking about real value what it means to you so maybe you're not thinking of moving maybe that number doesn't matter didn't matter you know Mm -hmm. that false number so um in you know, that's how the, the cycles kind of go, but this is a strange time right now. Mm-hmm. It's go, it goes up because it comes back down, but who knows what, what's on the forefront? Who knows what'll happen a month after we record this? Six months, we don't know. <laughs> the whole economy, we could have a global financial crisis, right. a GFC. But or it could be another year out, who knows? But who the knows? main thing we're talking about is think about the things that you can change, right? Change your focus, Mm -hmm. you know, unless you're the head of one of those economic forums or you're one of these (laughs) head honchos 
um, CEOs, whatever, you know, these... You're the head the, of a bank or something, which you're probably not listening to yeah, our podcast. Our little... But yeah, and, and that's Arizona okay. podcast, that's okay. Yeah, we're not you know, talking to you. Anyway. We're not talking to you, anyway. <laughs> <We're> t- <laughs> but the point is, think change your focus. I mm-hmm. think that's one thing that we've talked a lot about. Change your focus. What can you do within your realm, within your homestead? Right. And make value where you can. And by all means... Get out of debt. Kill it. Slaughter it. Slaughter it. Murder get it. Get out of debt. Just get it over with. Get get all of your debts paid off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you have to get live out of a on car payment. credit card payments, you know, putting things on credit cards because that's how you're making ends meet, then this episode may be a little bit difficult for you to follow because you've got a bigger crisis going on. You need to get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's not saying it in a snobby way, but it's saying it in a, I am panicking for you. Um, I am concerned for you because it's only going to get worse. Um, And and, and we're not trying to be pessimistic, but it's only going to get worse. So, Try as much as you can, whether you've got to get another job, um, you've got to move in with parents. I don't know what your situation is. Get rid of the car payment if you can. Buy an old jalopy. Buy or, an you old know, jalopy. Hopefully it's in yeah, good repair, you know, right? whatever you have to do, this is the time for you to strong, strong arm your finances and turn them around as hard as you can and make it a matter of prayer you know really try to turn your finances around because you know if you're putting things on credit card you are a slave to the debtor mm-hmm. or, Definitely. You, yeah you, you're just and you're, we've used that principle that's helped us out mm-hmm. yeah you know so really try to get yourself out of debt as mm-hmm. much as you possibly can but just know that even if you and and really, I want to speak to those of you who are really heavy in debt, especially credit card debt. If you are really heavy in credit card debt, really try to turn the tide because there's going to come a point in time where you're not going to be able to pay that credit card. And then the situation becomes even worse for you. So whatever you can do, to change the tide so that you are not using that credit card. Turn it, turn that credit card off. Learn to maybe do without. Look at other resources, other places that maybe you can get food, whatever you have to do to not use that credit card. Try your hardest. Just a, just a plea for people because I just really, from the financial aspect, I just really hate to see people suffer through the financial problems that are coming up again. It's cyclical. It happens every 10 years. We had it, um, we're well overdue for it, but we had it in 2008 and we're having it again. And, um, you know, Try your best to get out of that situation. Seek, seek some financial help mm-hmm. to get out. Yeah. Yeah. This has been good. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of bad news out there or fear and whatnot. Who, who knows what's going to happen? Like I said, in the next month, six months, year, mm-hmm. exactly. But we know things are looking and, you know, the down, it's going down, right? Yeah, it is. Um, even Bible prophecy talks about this too, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to get really bad mm-hmm. and then it'll get good. And then, right. I don't know. Probably really. Yeah. <laughs> but we, um, you know, we just wanted to give some things that have, we know have helped us. Mm-hmm. Um, so this crazy system of the things out there, the financial markets and whatnot, they just, they want you to be in debt. They don't care. Yeah. So do, you know, do go the opposite way. Yeah. All right. So we hope that this advice has been good, been helpful. 
and gives kind of a positive spin on probably what you've been hearing, reading about, and so on. Mm -hmm. So don't look at the false number of what you thought things were worth, but make value where you can, mm -hmm. make changes, and uh, that'll, that'll be a good thing to focus on. Right. So from all of us here, to all of you out there, be safe out there, and happy homesteading. Goodbye.